check out number 12 on the homework. Uh, what are we going to do here? We're just going to rearrange things and multiply. I want to multiply the 3 times 5, and then I want to multiply square root of 3 times square root of 3. So 3 times 5 is 15, and the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is really just 3. Does that make sense? So I really have 15 times 3, which is 45. Nice and simple as popping a pimple, 45. Okay, how about this guy? This guy's fun. Because we can't add the square root of 2 plus square root of 8 yet because they're not like terms. So a good thing to do would be to change that square root of 8 into uh, 4 times 2, which means that when you split the root, you're going to have 2 square root of 2. And now you'll be able to add it with this square root of 2 that you just brought down. It's really a 1 square root of 2. But before we add those together, let's work on the square root of 50. That becomes the square root of uh, 25 times 2, correct? So when you split those, uh, you're going to end up with the square root of 25 and the square root of 2. And the square root of 25 is 5 square root of 2. So now you really could add 1 square root of 2 plus 2 square root of 2 plus 5 square root of 2, giving you a total of 8 square roots of 2. Number 19, all right? Number 19, it's really a binomial times a binomial with radicals in them. So you're going to have to distribute. Now check this out. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times positive square root of 5 is positive 1 square root of 5. You don't even need to write the 1 in front. You could leave it as just a square root of 5. Now the other one, uh, when you take negative square root of 5 times 1, that's going to be negative 1 square root of 5. I want to take negative square root of 5 times positive square root of 5. That's going to be a negative. What is square root of 5 times square root of 5? That's the square root of 25, which we're going to get 5 later on. But distributing the middle terms, you're going to end up with one positive, one negative. And what happens with those middle terms with the positive and negative? They cancel out. Ladies and gentlemen, the middle terms are eliminated. And this is what happens when you multiply a binomial by its conjugate, right? So if you multiply a binomial by its conjugate, the radicals disappear. The conjugate is simply changing the middle sign. So 1 minus the square root of 5 times 1 plus the square root of 5. Notice that the middle radicals disappeared. And even this radical is going to disappear because the square root of 25 is just 5. So you end up with 1 minus 5. The answer is negative 4. No more square roots. So when you multiply a binomial by its conjugate, it works out nice and beautiful. Um, let's not do 20. Let's jump to number 22. We need to know that you don't want, um, you don't want uh, square roots in the denominator. So on 22 and 23, we're going to have to get rid of the square roots in the denominator. So which one do you guys want to do, 22 or 23? Uh, 23. 23. Okay, so if I want to get rid of this radical in the denominator, it's not enough to multiply by the square root of 2. You have to multiply by its conjugate because this really is a binomial. And you need to multiply by the conjugate of that binomial, which would be 3 minus the square root of 2. That's the conjugate. And what you do to the bottom, you must do to the top, 3 minus the square root of 2 up here also. So on the bottom, watch what happens. Watch the magic. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times negative square root of 2 is negative 3 square root of 2. But positive square root of 2 times 3 will give you a positive 3 square root of 2. And positive square root of 2 times negative square root of 2 is a negative square root of 4. And again, when you multiply by the conjugate, the, the radical values disappear. The, the terms in the middle... They disappear because one's negative, one's positive. And even this guy, the square root of 4 is really 2. So you really have 9 minus 2, which is equal to 7. Now that's just the denominator. So on the answer, let me zoom out a little. On the answer, we're going to have a 7 down here on the bottom. Now what about the top? I still need to take that 4 and distribute it. 4 times 3, that's 12. And then... Uh, 4 times 
negative square root of 2, that's going to be negative 4 square root of 2. That would be the final answer right there. So let's jump to number 21. Uh, you're going to write it twice because there is nothing to do on the inside of the parentheses. You can't combine radicals that are not alike, so you're going to write it twice. And of course, you're going to distribute the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. What's that? That's the square root of 4, but the square root of 4, well, I'll, I'll write it, the square root of 4. And how about the square root of 2 times negative square root of 6? Negative square root of 12. Thank you. And negative square root of 6 times positive square root of 2, that's a negative square root of 12 again. And negative square root of 6 times negative square root of 6, that's positive square root of 36. And now you look at your middle terms, they're not going to cancel this time. This time you actually have to combine them. And what do we get? What's negative square root of 12 plus negative square root of 12? That's negative 2 square roots of 12, right? That's negative 2 square roots of 12. Um, so let me write that down. Negative 2 square roots of 12. Okay, what else? This uh, outside square root of 4 becomes a nice, beautiful number 2. The square root of 36 becomes a nice, beautiful plus 6, right? And now you have three terms, and out of those three terms, you could combine 2 plus 6, and what do you get as an answer? 8. Eight. And you still have this left over, the minus 2 square root of 12. Minus 2 square root of 12. Now, some people will say I'm done, but the thing is you could still work on the square root of 12. Let's still work on the square root of 12 here. The square root of 12, I could rewrite it as what? 4, Four times 3. And when you split the root, and of course you're going to bring down the negative 2 and bring down the 8 in the front, uh, the square root of 4 is really 2, so you really have negative 2 times 2 times the square root of 3. And don't forget about bringing down the 8. Minus four. So you really have 8 minus 4 square roots of 3 as your final answer right there. Was it easy? No, it's not easy. Is it fun? Absolutely fun.